Hello friends, in this video we are going to learn about the GraphQL. So I haven't uploaded any of the GraphQL tutorial. So here we GraphQL basically used for the REST APIs. Uh, in Magento use the default GraphQL for the REST API for the lightning fast speed. And uh, like most of the APIs, that is the SOAP API and the REST APIs, what they did, they can return most of the unnecessary data that uh, the front end developer doesn't need it, right? And uh, one other advantage of this that there is only a one endpoint that is GraphQL and you can make the custom query on that and return the specific desired data accordingly, right? I'm not asking like uh, uh, you, if you can create the custom REST APIs, that is okay, that you can modify the response accordingly. But the default Magento uh, REST APIs, SOAP APIs, they contain the redundant data which the front-end developer doesn't need it. So how to uh, like shortcut that method? So here they have uh, used the concept of GraphQL which we can uh, re reduce the length of the response. So here we are going to learn how to create custom GraphQL APIs in Magento 2. So here I am creating login API with the help of the GraphQL. Okay, so let's start the GraphQL tutorial and let's create the customer login with the help of the GraphQL in Magento 2. So let's begin the tutorial. So first of all, let me go to my folder. We have app code. We have registering account. We have a customer login. ETC model and registration.php. These things we are requiring. ETC, we have module.xml. Let's open it so that you can create the module. This is the basic module. Rajnikan customer login, Magento customer that we are going to use and Magento GraphQL that we are using. Next, we have schema GraphQLs that define the structure of that schema, how it gonna be happen, right? So let's open it and let's see. So you can see that custom module is there you can see uh, you can relate it also query custom GraphQL that expects email and the password okay so here type query right custom that accepts email and the password right and it will uh, do the rest of the functionality with the help of the resolver class that we have created where the logic is inbuilt in the in the meantime what they can return entity id first name last name and email when the all the resolver class data what they return uh, the data that it should be in the format of this one entity id first name last name and email that gonna be returned okay so let's uh, this is the schema dot graphql so basically you need to use this before without this you can't do the this you can't do this that kind of approach like adding like this one okay so so I, I am passing email and the password and I, what it gonna be return entity ID first name last name and the email let's send so you can see that entity ID first name last name and the email it returning right if I go and check using this one and sign in this method and go to my account my account so you can see the test test and super admin that that's my you um, first name last name and the email and you can see that we have the entity id first name last name email so you can give this data to the front end they get that they can integrate it right okay and uh, let's go to the logic of building the resolver class uh, so let's go to that one also so we have custom GraphQL, which we have written all the necessary login functionality. So see all these things, right? We have a class custom graph implements the resolver interface. That is a GraphQL query, right? After this, I have put the log that, that, that is important function resolve, right? And in this, I am taking the argument email and the password. If it is not, then it will throw the GraphQL authorization exception that email and the password of the customer should be specified. Right? And after that, I have put the logic that this account management authenticate email and the password, then logged in as a customer, then I have manipulated the data and format it, then send it with the value factor and result we have printing it. Right? And if it is not sending in, then it will return the empty data and uh, rest of the exception they are going to throw on by default of the GraphQL. 
So you can see that we have successfully created customer login API using the GraphQL, right? We will discuss more things later on the stages of the Magenta tutorials. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. I hope you uh, like the, I hope, I hope you understand what exactly we have done. If you have any issue, just uh, write down in the comment below. Thank you so much. Have a great day.